hello guys and welcome to this video today we will create a simple car parking project in C++ and this project will help you to strengthen your C++ coding so before getting right into the coding first of all let me give you the overview of what we would be creating actually so this is our final output where we have to choose between five options the first option is parking the taxi the second one is for parking the bus and the third one is for parking the car and we have the fourth one for displaying all the records of this car parking system like this will display the number of taxis parked number of buses parked number of cars parked and also this will show you the total amount that we have received from each entry and this will also show you the total number of vehicles in the parking Finally we have our fifth option that is for deleting the complete record and get back everything to zero. And guys this also has a functionality of parking is full. Like if the number of vehicles exceeds from 50 or 100 whatever you want this will not allow to park them and will detect the number of cars in each entry. So this is amazing it is really a very cool program and you will learn a lot after following this video. So let's go to code blocks and start creating this simple program. So here let's create a new project by clicking on the file menu and project and here let's mark the console application because it will be a console based program. It doesn't include any graphics for now. After that let's click on the go option and here let's click next and here make sure that C++ is selected. After that click next and let's type your project name. So I am typing car parking and no need to add CPP extension because it will add that automatically and you don't need to type. So after that you can change your project directory and save your project somewhere else or in other drives or folders. But for now I am keeping it the default one. Go to next and there just click on finish. So this will create a new project for you and now you can create as many CPP files as you want and these C++ files will remain in separate folder. So this is the benefit of creating a project in code blocks. So here let's create new CPP file in our project by clicking on the file menu again and this time let's create a file called as car parking program dot CPP and this time make sure to add cpp extension to your name after that you will see on the left side of your ide that this file is created now let's start with our program so first of all let's create some variables for the following so int t is equal to 0 for the number of taxis parked and we will assign 0 to it at the beginning after that let's write int b is equal to 0 for the bus and int c is equal to 0 for the car now let's create one variable for the total amount as int amount is equal to 0 and let's create one variable for total number of vehicles as int total is equal to 0. And now let's write some messages for the user to choose between them. So let's write C out press 1 for taxi parking and after that let's write end L. Similarly let's write C out press 2 for bus parking and end L then C out press 3 for car parking and end L at the end. Now let's write another C out statement that says press 4 to check the records and once again end L at the end. And finally let's write a message that says press 5 to delete the record and we will write end L at the end. Now let's write new variable that will store the input value that a user will type and based on the input we will run switch statement to perform the following tasks and you can also use else if statement for this program but I am using switch statement right now. So let's declare int op short for option at the top and down there just c in op so this will expect integer from the user. Now let's use this option variable inside the switch statement and let's create the cases for each option as case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4 and case 5. Now inside every case we will write a block of code to perform the tasks. 
So now inside the case 1 which means if the user has pressed 1 from his keyboard then switch statement will switch between all the cases and consider the one that has the same value as the user has typed. So if the user has pressed 1 on the keyboard then it will definitely go inside the case 1 and execute whatever we will write inside that. So let's write if statement that has the condition if count less than or equal to 50 then we will store amount is equal to amount plus 200 as taxi costs 200 and also we will store count is equal to count plus 1 and finally let's store the taxi and let's write t is equal to t plus 1 else if count is not less than or equal to 50 then we will write see out statement that says that parking is full no more vehicles and now we have written the code for case 1 but we have also to mention the break statement at the end of every case to exit out of program and to leave everything else as it is Similarly inside the case 2 which means if the user has pressed 2 from his keyboard then switch statement will switch between all the cases and consider the one that has the same value as the user has typed. So if the user has pressed 2 on the keyboard then it will definitely go inside the case 2 and execute whatever we will write inside that. So let's write if statement that has the condition if count less than or equal to 50 then we will store amount as amount equal to amount plus 300 as bus costs 300 and also we will store count is equal to count plus 1 and finally let's store the bus and let's write b is equal to b plus 1 else if count is not less than or equal to 50 then we will write c out statement that says parking is full no more vehicles. And now we have written the code for case 2 also but we have also to mention break statement at the end to exit out of program and to leave everything else as it is. Now for case 3 we will repeat the same thing so inside the case 3 which means if the user has pressed 3 from his keyboard then switch statement will switch between all the cases and consider the one that has the same value as the user has typed. So if the user has pressed 4 on the keyboard then it will definitely go inside the case 4 and execute whatever we will write inside that. So let's write if statement that has the condition which says that if count is less than or equal to 50 then we will store amount is equal to amount plus 400 because parking of the car costs 400 and also we will store count is equal to count plus 1 and finally let's store the car and let's write c is equal to c plus 1 else if count is not less than or equal to 50 then we will write c out statement that says that parking is full no more vehicles and now we have written the code for case 3 also but we have also to mention break statement at the end to exit out of our program and to leave everything else as it is now for case 4 what we are gonna do is that we have to print all the records of our car parking on the screen and this is the part that will actually appear on the screen. So we will write C out number of taxis parked as T and end L at the end. Similarly C out number of buses parked as B and end L and C out number of cars parked as C and end L at the end. After that write C out statement one more time for the amount. So we will write total amount is and pass the amount variable that we are updating inside every case and end L at the end and finally let's write C out statement for total number of vehicles as count and once again let's write end L at the end and we will write break statement at the end of our case. So the last case is case number 5 that will hold the functionality to delete everything from the record. So if the user has pressed 5 then the code inside this case would be executed so let's put everything equal to 0. So let's write amount is equal to 0, count is equal to 0, number of bus is equal to 0, number of cars is equal to 0 and number of taxis is equal to 0. And let's print a message that says record deleted. And let's put this message inside of the stars to make it more understanding and clean. And don't forget to write break statement at the end of our case. Now we will turn each variable to 0 and if the user type 4 again in order to check the record then he will get 0 0 after each thing. So number of taxis parked should be 0 and buses, cars, 
amount and total number of vehicles in the parking everything will be zero and now we have to write one more statement that is the default statement with switch that is used if the user has not typed a correct number that matches the case so the code inside the default will be run so let's write the see out statement that says invalid number and end l at the end finally let's put a while loop that always remains true around our program because if we don't use a while statement then our program will terminate after each case and don't wait for the second input so this will make our program alive forever now we have successfully written our program and this is the time to check it out to see whether it is working or not so let's run the program and there you go it is showing you the message that says press 1 for taxi 2 for bus 3 for car, 4 for checking your record and 5 for deleting the record. So let's input 1 and there you go we have made one entry for the taxi. And now press 2 so we have made entry for the bus. And now let's press 4 so there you go it has printed the records correctly. And now if I press the 5 from my keyboard and again if I press 4 to check it back so there you go everything has turned to 0 0. So it means the delete functionality also works. So we have our car parking project ready. I hope you have enjoyed this very simple project in C++. So that's it for this video. And by the way guys I have a complete course on C++. I will put the link in the description and also put the link of complete playlist in the top. So that you can learn C++ step by step by watching these tutorials. And guys this is the absolute beginner course that I have made for you so definitely check it out this will help you a lot and it contains videos with very good explanation I believe I have given my 100% to make you understand each topic so yeah that's all for today I hope you have learned something from this video for more videos please like share and subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon next to it so that you never miss our future videos Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next time.